Arkansas students will return from spring break tomorrow. On this day 21 years ago, they had just done the same when tragedy struck outside Jonesboro. Hey! But that day would become anything but typical. Student Andrew Golden pulled the fire alarm, then he and Mitchell Johnson opened fire on a crowd of students and staff as they evacuated. Williams is seen here on video moments after the shooting. This video contains the deposition of one of the killers in the Jonesboro school shooting. On March 24, 1998, Mitchell Johnson, 13, and Andrew Golden, 11, set off the fire alarm of their school, Westside Middle School in Jonesboro, Arkansas. The two lay in wait outside while teachers led their students to the designated area in case of a fire. Johnson and Golden, both possessing multiple weapons, began shooting, rapidly striking several students in the head. When it was over, four students and one teacher had been fatally shot, and several more were injured. The two boys tried to escape to a van they had hidden in the woods with supplies, but within 10 minutes, they were apprehended by the police. Because of their ages, Johnson and Golden were both tried as juveniles. They were found guilty on five counts of murder and placed in a juvenile correctional facility until their 21st birthday. Upon his release, Golden began making a new life for himself and changed his name to Drew Douglas Grant. The time is 1.36 p.m. We are on the record. This is an additional videotape deposition in the matter of Mitchell Taylor, Wright et al. <clears throat> versus Andrew Goldman, also known as Drew Grant et al. And we read the deposition of Andrew Goldman, also known as Drew Grant. Uh, Council present for previous deposition in this matter on this day at this location are again present for this deposition. Uh, our court reporter's name is Jenny Burks, video taking the deposition of Steve Berletta, also in attendance. Uh, in addition to those at the previous deposition on this day is Mitchell Wright. And with our court reporter, please, please. Okay. please the testimony given the truth, the whole truth, and nothing that the truth will be done. I do. Castle. State your name for the record, please. Mm -hmm. Drew Douglas Grant. You're going to have to speak up. I can't hear you, and uh, I want to make sure our court reporter can hear you. Sir. Drew Douglas Grant. Yes, sir. <clears throat> when and where did you come up with that name? It was after my release. All right, what was your name prior to your release from uh, incarceration? Andrew Golden. When did you get your name changed? I don't remember the exact date. Can you give me an approximate date? Um, the summer of 2007. Where were you living when you got your name changed? In Missouri. Given the nature of his crime and the public attitude toward him, Golden had to change his name for his own safety. Where? In Cape Girardeau. Street address. Living with your sister? Yes, sir. And that was your residence? Yes, sir. Did you report to the court that uh, your residence, that you were a resident of Missouri in the summer of 07 so that you could get your uh, name changed? Yes, sir. Is that the reason you moved to Missouri, so you could get your name changed and raise less uh, likelihood of a, any awareness? Yes, sir. And did you also apply for a uh, Missouri driver's license? Yes, sir. And did you report your uh, address as a <coughs> Missouri address? Yes, sir. Uh, do you have your driver's license with you? Uh, my current driver's license? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May I see it, please? I think there was a copy of it somewhere. I, I want to see your original, and if this is a copy, then that's fine, but I want to see your original. It shows this is uh, issued on September the 8th of 2008, is that correct? Yes, sir. And we'll mark that as Exhibit 19, a photocopy of it. Do you have any other driver's licenses uh, in your possession? No, sir. What happened to the Missouri driver's license? When you get an Arkansas driver's license, they, they keep the other. Right. And uh, so you got, when did you get the Missouri driver's license? I don't remember the exact date. Approximately. Uh, you can play this game. If I ask you a date and you don't know the exact date, just give me the best approximation you know. It would have been the summer of 2007. All right. And when did you leave Cape Girardeau? Um... 
about the fall of 2007? Yes, sir. Where did you go to from there? To uh, my mother and father's house. Where is it? In Ravenden. And you knew that I, on behalf of the family, were trying to serve you with process and sent at least deputy sheriffs to your parents' home on at least two occasions. You were aware of that, weren't you? No, sir. Your mom never told you that deputy sheriff showed up looking for you? Not that I can recall. Mm -hmm. That's something y'all wouldn't discuss? I don't remember if she she ever said anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, How'd you come up with the name uh, Grant? Where'd that name come from? That was my uh, grandmother's maiden name. Douglas? That was my middle name. Okay. And you just shortened Andrew to Drew? Yes, sir. All right. Um, your Arkansas driver's license uh, <coughs> indicates a date of birth of 5-25-86. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, you understand this deposition is taken under oath and you've been sworn? Yes, you sir. You did swear the witness, did you not? Okay. And you understand this deposition is subject to penalty of perjury? Yes, sir. And that if you do false swearing, you could be criminally prosecuted for it? Yes, sir. Okay. If at any time I ask you a question you don't understand it, uh, I expect you to let me know so that I can rephrase the question. Is that agreeable? Yes, sir. And if... Uh, uh, you answer a question, I'm going to assume you understand. Is that agreeable? Yes, sir. Uh, and you've had the benefit of sitting here uh, all morning listening to your mother testify, have you not? Yes, sir. So when I ask you questions, you already know what your mother had to say. Yes, right? sir. Okay. Have you ever used a name other than Andrew Golden or Drew Grant, whether legally, officially, or as an alias or a nickname or any other name? No, sir. Golden has never used an alias other than his new legal name. If you haven't yet, check out my Patreon that is full of exclusive videos like this one about Luis Rivera. Unlike regular interrogations, Rivera, a murderer for hire, is given evidence as a part of a deal to reduce his sentence. You can watch the full video and many more at patreon.com backslash Stranger Stories Plus. Uh, why did you change your name? To start over. Start over how? Why? We we'll start a new life. Why? That way it would cause less problems when I go to school and things and um, anything else? No, sir. Didn't want anybody to know where you were, did you? Is it important to you that you? Uh, uh, hide out from your past? No, sir. You don't mind if the public knows of your whereabouts and who you are? There would be some safety concerns. What safety concerns from whom? There were some death threats. Yeah, well, that was back in 1998 by people living in Texas and uh, New York or somewhere? Yes, sir. And, and uh, nobody was ever prosecuted or even arrested for those where they, they were just threats in a letter form, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, you never received any threats from any member of the families of the victims of, of the shooting at Westside, have you? While the threats were directed at Golden, there's always the possibility that someone would harm family and friends if they knew they were associated with Golden. Other than Mr. Wright saying that on the stand that day, nothing. Tell me what Mr. Wright said. That he would be waiting on me when I was released. And did he say what he'd be doing when he was waiting on you? No, sir. In fact, he's waiting on you here today, isn't he? Yes, sir. Because he wants to hear your side of what happened. Yes, sir. You killed his wife. You participated in the killing of his wife, didn't you? Yes, sir. And is that come as a surprise to you? He'd want to hear from you about what you had to say about that? No, sir. So that's not a threat. That's somebody who's wanting to know what, what you did and why you did it, right? Yes, sir. Why was his wife killed? I don't know. Uh, who shot Shannon Wright? I don't know. Oh, come on. What gun were you using? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Uh, you recognize that when I ask you these questions, there is some forensic evidence of what guns were used 
and we already have the deposition of Mitchell Johnson, which you've read, right? Yes, sir. And uh, do you remember Mitchell Johnson saying which gun he used? Yes, sir. What gun did he say he used? He used a thirty out six. And what other gun uh, was used to kill people that day? There was a M1 carbine. An M1 carbine. Did you ever see Mitchell Johnson shoot the M1 carbine? No, sir. Was there anybody else shooting besides you and Mitchell Johnson? No, sir. So the only person that would have shot the M1 carbine would have been you, right? Yes, sir. So how many times did you shoot the M1 carbine? I don't know. How did you select your targets? I didn't. You didn't select them? They just fell down, you shot up in the air, the bullets flew out of the sky and landed on them? Is that it? No, sir. I never shot at anybody. You never shot at anybody? Not directly trying to pick someone out of the crowd or anything. Mm -hmm. Did uh, you read Mitchell Johnson's deposition about how him seeing a child's head get shot? Yes, sir. Who do you say he saw get shot in the head? Natalie Brooks. You shot Natalie Brooks in the head, didn't you? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't remember it. You don't remember shooting somebody in the head? Is that what you're telling us under your oath? Mm, yes, sir. And you're willing to let a jury decide if that's true or not under penalty of perjury? I don't remember it. Well, have you had any hit trauma to your head since the time of the shooting? Yes, sir. I was in a motorcycle wreck. Uh-huh. And uh, what, kind of, what kind of trauma did you have? I landed on my head and I broke my collarbone. Uh-huh. And do uh, you remember where you were living at that time when you had the wreck? Yes, sir. Where were you living? I was staying between a couple different residences. Head trauma aside, Golden may not recall exactly who he shot. He was firing at the same time as Johnson, and he was picking targets at random. There is also the possibility that his mind has blocked some of the details because he is unable to confront them directly. You were what? I was between a couple of different residences. What were those two residences? I was 832 Silver Springs Road at Evening Shade, and then... Uh, 910 Heber Springs Road uh, at Deshay. Deshay? Yes, sir. What about Batesville? That's Batesville, Deshay. It's Spell Deshay. D-E-S-H-A. All right. Is that part of Batesville? It's right there on the outskirts of it. Okay. Um, where were you employed when this motorcycle wreck happened? I wasn't employed. Were you in school? Yes, sir. Where were you in school? At the University of Arkansas Community College. Where? At Batesville. And were you in school? Uh, were classes in session at the general time frame when the wreck happened? Yes, sir. About when did the wreck happen? It was uh, May, um, May of some time. It was early May what year? Uh, of 2008. Huh? And uh, whose motorcycle were you riding? It was, uh, it's in my mother's name, but it's my father's and mine. It's your father's and who? Mine. Who bought it for you? My mother. Did anybody ride it besides you? Yes, sir, my father did. Okay. And uh, was anybody else involved in that accident? No, sir. How'd the accident happen? I lost control of the vehicle. And who was your insurance company? I don't know. Was it State Farm? I'm not sure. Okay. And uh, did you go get medical treatment? Yes, sir. Where'd you go? Uh, White River Medical Center. And tell me what, what treatment you got. There was, uh, they ended up doing surgery on my shoulder and a plate was and put in. And that was it. And uh, how did you do in school that semester? Pretty good. And uh, how had your classes gone before the wreck? Pretty good. And where did you live uh, when you were going to school? At um, my mother and father's house, at Evening Shade, and at uh, Deshay. How did you... In when we say to shave, it's the same thing as Batesville for all practical purposes? Yes, sir. How did you decide where you'd stay when? It depended on the school schedule. Well, explain it to me. Well, the days before school, sometimes I would stay. That way I wouldn't have to get up as early to drive. 
And uh, when school, what days did you have classes? On Tuesdays and Thursdays. So would you go up and stay in baseball on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday so you wouldn't have to drive? Just usually, it depends. They'd varied. What was normal? Uh, Monday night, Wednesday night, and then um, Thursday night or Friday night, I'd go home or I'd go to the farm. Since his release from prison, Golden led a very quiet life, focusing most of his attention on his college career. All right, when you went to your mom and dad's house, was that the one in Ravendale? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we've already talked about it being close to the river. Yes, sir. And uh, how did you describe that town in, in some of your uh, email texting or, or, or emailing? That it was small and there was nothing much. What kind of profane words did you use to describe it? You know, don't you? Yes, sir. What did you call the town? BFE. Hmm? BFE. We're grown-ups. Tell us what words you used. I said bumfuck. And why did you select that name for that town? And first thing that popped in my head. What about it made it such a bum town? And there's nothing there. There's a gas station and restaurant. Well, there's enough there to keep you going there, wasn't there? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And to the people that live there, that choose to live there, they apparently like it? Yes, sir. But since it doesn't meet your taste, it's a, a bum up town, right? Yes, sir. Uh huh. And tell me about this farm. Whose farm was it? It's uh, our pastor's, or at the time it was. Um, it's his farm. What's his name? Pat Hovis. Pat Hovis. What church does he pastor? Um, it's the Baptist Church there in Ravenden. What's the name of it? First Baptist, I think. You didn't go there very much, did you? No, sir. How often did you go, if at all? I've never attended his church. Okay. What church did you attend, if any? Uh, the First Assembly. First Assembly of what? God. Where? At Imboden. And how often did you go there? I've been there twice in the past couple of weeks. Twice in the past couple of weeks? Yes, sir. How about the last uh, two years? How many times have you been? This is a recent thing. I haven't. So you just recently, right before this deposition, went to church a couple of times? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It is common for people who are about to have a deposition to start attending church or participating in charities and volunteer work in an effort to make themselves look better. As evidenced by the lawyer's comments, it is a move that does not carry much weight. And uh, let me just bounce around a little bit and ask you some questions. Uh, do you know the names of the children who were killed at the West Side shooting? Yes, sir. Who are they? Uh, Paige Herring. All right. Brittany Varner. All right. Stephanie Johnson. You're letting your voice drop. You got to speak up. Stephanie Johnson. Who else? And Natalie Brooks. Was the teacher killed? Yes, sir. Who? Shannon Wright. And uh, did you know any of those uh, five people before they were killed? Yes, sir. Which one of them did you know? Uh, Paige Herring, Natalie Brooks, Brittany Varner. How did you know them? I had classes with them. Had uh, Paige Herring ever been rude or mean to you? No, sir. Had Brittany Varner ever been rude or mean to you? No, sir. Natalie Brooks ever been rude or mean to you? No, sir. How about Stephanie Johnson? I didn't didn't know her. And uh, what about Shannon Wright? Had she ever been mean or rude to you? No, sir. Had Shannon Wright ever uh, been involved in uh, a decision to place any disciplinary actions against you? Not that I can remember. And did, well, you had some disciplinary actions against you in sixth grade, did you not? Not that I remember. Did you ever go to uh, in-school suspension? No, sir. Did you ever get in any trouble uh, while you were in school in the sixth grade? Not that I remember. You remember your mom talking about, uh, you talking about guns at school? Yes, sir. You remember that incident? I don't remember the incident personally, no. Okay. Uh, when uh, you were riding this motorcycle, you remember about how fast you were going when you lost control? 
Around 40 or so. Around 40 or so. Okay. What kind of helmet did you have on? What brand? I don't remember the brand. Okay. Put your hat on a helmet? Yes, sir. What happened to the helmet? Um, I'm not sure. Do you still have it? No, sir. You still have a motorcycle? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. How much damage was done to the motorcycle? Ballpark. Totaled? Uh, it was almost totaled. Uh -huh. um, what's your uh, cell phone number? 870-844-0036. You're dropping your voice again. Um, now, you have these two attorneys that are representing you now, right? Yes, sir. Are you paying either one of them? You yourself? Not me, no, sir. Or your parents? I think so. Okay. Uh, you've had other attorneys, have you not? Yes, sir. And uh, who who was the attorney from California? I don't remember his name. Uh, what about Val Price? Yes, sir. And did you discharge Val Price, or did his services end when the state juvenile proceedings ended? I can't remember. What about the uh, federal public defender? Lee Allen Fowler. Lee Allen Fowler, yes. Tell me, uh, when did her services for you in, after you got out of federal custody? I think so. I don't... Uh -huh. Did you go to trial in the federal case? Yes, sir. Did you testify? No, sir. Did Mitchell Johnson testify? Uh, I'm not sure. It was separate. Oh, they were separate. Okay. What about the uh, juvenile proceeding in Craighead County? Did you go to trial? Yes, sir. Did you testify? No, sir. Did uh, uh, Mitchell Johnson testify? I can't remember. Okay. And uh, when the shooting incident took place, uh, you were involved in the shooting, were you not? Yes, sir. Okay. And you've sat here and heard your mother tell the story that you gave her about how you got involved in that shooting, didn't you? Yes, sir. And that's uh, what you had told her? Yes, sir. You've read uh, Mitchell Johnson's deposition, have you not? Yes, sir. One of you two are lying through your teeth, if not both of you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, any other addresses you've had. We've got the Cape Ger Gerardo address, we've got the Batesville address, we've got the farm in uh, uh, Evening Shade, and we've got the Raven Den address. Any other place you've lived or stayed except while uh, or after you've been released? No, sir. Who lived with you at the Raven Den address? My mother and father. Who lived with you on the farm? I generally by myself. And other than when you weren't by yourself, who stayed overnight with you at the farm? My mother and father. Anybody else? That would be it. Or my brother and sister did after uh, I was released okay. for a short time. What about the Batesville address? By myself. Uh, since you've been released, have you been dating any girls? I have dated some girls, but not currently. Since you've released, have you uh, been back to Jonesboro? Yes, sir. How many occasions? I went to see my grandmother a few times. and That's about it. I've been to the mall once or twice. About how many times have you been back to Jonesboro? I don't know. Give me your best estimate. Maybe ten times. I... Did you ever go by the West Side School and look at uh, where this carnage took place? No, sir. Did you ever make any effort to contact any of the families and express your sorrow to them? No, sir. I was told not to. By whom? By my lawyers. Which lawyers? These today? No, sir. Who? Val Price and some of the others. Of course. That's why, I, that's why you were facing criminal charges, right? Yes, sir. Once you got out of uh, federal custody, there was nobody telling you not to contact them, were there? No, sir. Tell me why you didn't contact anybody and tell them you're sorry about what happened. Let me tell you the truth about what happened. I didn't want to start anything else up. You think they didn't want to know what happened to their daughters and their wife? 
Yes, sir. You think they didn't want to know? No, I think they wanted to know. Well, why didn't you have enough human compassion just to call them and tell them, let me tell you what happened and why? If you're interested in knowing, if you don't want to talk to me, fine. Why didn't you at least make an effort? I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. Do you claim that you suffer from remorse as a result of this? Yes, sir. The lawyer is skeptical about Golden's remorse but not contacting the families does not necessarily indicate a lack of compassion. There is no good way to determine the best way to reach out to them, and doing so might cause them more emotional harm. It is a difficult situation to navigate, and many people avoid much less extreme interactions than these have the potential to become. Uh, remorse and grief? Yes, sir. Guilt? Yes, sir. Uh, guilt? but not to the point to try to relieve the pain of those who were your victims? I would have liked to contact them. Who kept you from it? I just, I didn't want to start anything else up. Didn't want to stir anything up. In other words, you didn't want to give them any peace of mind by giving them information that would help them understand what happened to their loved ones? Is that it? No, sir. Or did you just not want them to know where you were or anything about you so you could have your privacy and go on with your life? Which one was it? I just... Uh, you were more concerned with your privacy and going on with your life than theirs, weren't you? No, sir. Then why didn't you call them? Why didn't you write them? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you lived anywhere else you haven't told me about since your release? No, sir. How long were you in Memphis? For the last year or so of my federal stay. How long were you in South Dakota? What age were you when you went up there about? I think I was 14 or 15. And you were at Alexander uh, from the time you left Craighead County uh, until you went to South Dakota, correct? Yes, sir. Let's talk about Craighead County. When you were in Craighead County, um, did you at any time tell the police what happened or anybody from law enforcement? No, sir. Why not? I was scared. Scared what? And I was, I couldn't talk. I, I don't, I just, I don't know. Scared of whom or scared of what? I was just scared. What do you think could happen to you worse than what happened to the people you shot, was there? No, sir. Again, you put yourself first? Even after the horrendous shooting, you were thinking of yourself more than the victims and their families, weren't you? I was just scared. Scared of what? Everything that had happened, I... I didn't know what was help, what else was going to happen. I didn't... I just didn't know. I can't hear you. I said I didn't know. I just... And did your parents tell you to keep your mouth shut and not talk about it? No, sir. My lawyers did. But your parents didn't? Mm -mm. No? No, sir. Okay. What about uh, Mitchell Johnson? Uh, how long did you know Mitchell Johnson before the shooting? Golden and Johnson had very little interaction prior to the shooting. They were in different grades and did not attend any classes together. They rode the same school bus, which is where they began to vent to one another about their complaints about school. 
I don't remember. Well, had you just met him the day of the shooting? No, sir. Had you been in sixth grade with him and riding the bus with him? Yes, sir. Had you ridden, did you know him when you were in fifth grade? I think so. Uh, did you ever uh, spend any time with Mitchell Johnson uh, at school on the playground or during breaks from classes in sixth grade? No, sir. No? No, sir, not that I remember. Uh, and when you were rode, rode on the bus, did you and he ride side by side on the bus? Yes, sir. Were there normally two people for each side of the bus? Yes, sir. And were you assigned the seating next to uh, uh, Mitchell Johnson? Yes, sir. Did you ever ask to have your seating assignment changed? Not that I remember. Who was your bus driver? I can't remember. Who was your principal? Miss Kirtner, I think. Who was your sixth grade teacher? They changed classes. All right. Who did you have in sixth grade? Who were some of the teachers you had? Miss Wright. Miss Thedford. Anybody else? Those are the only two I can remember. All right. And when you were in sixth grade, uh, uh, <clears throat> had you ever gone hunting before then? Yes, sir. What kind of hunting had you done before sixth grade? Squirrel hunting, rabbit hunting, duck hunting. Deer? I can't remember ever going. Uh, Golden hunted with his family and was proficient with guns. What kinds of guns had you shot, uh, live guns, live ammunition, before the uh, shooting at Westside? Pistols and rifles? Yes, sir. Um, what kind of pistols? Automatics, revolvers, derringers, all of them? Yes, sir. Who taught you to shoot? I think my grandfather did. Did your dad also help teach you to shoot, or was it mainly your grandfather? It was probably both of them. When did you first start shooting a gun? I don't know. Four years old? When you were a little bitty, wasn't it? When I was young, yes. You've been shooting guns with live ammo as long as you can remember back to your early childhood. Isn't that true? I remember starting with a BB gun, and that was when I was young. Okay. And you also shot rifles, did you not? Yes, sir. And you shot rifles with scopes and with open sights, didn't you? Yes, sir. Who taught you how to sh take aim with an open sight rifle? Your grandfather? It may have been. Uh, who taught you how to aim with a scope? Grandfather? It may have been. Well, who else would it have been if it wasn't your grandfather? Either him or my father. Oh, either your grandfather or your father? And uh, you first started out shooting target practice, did you not? Yes, sir. Where would you go to target practice? At my grandfather's house. And when you say at your grandfather's house, that's the house close to West Side? Yes, sir. Was there a wooded area or a gravel pit or something like that y'all would shoot in? Where would you shoot? There was a, a berm or a washed out spot. Kind of like a gully or something? Yes, sir. All right. And would you put up targets and shoot at them? Yes, sir. What kind of targets did you use? And paper targets and cans and stuff like that. And paper targets, some of them were like silhouettes of of a human being like you see on gun shows and like you see at, at gun stores and you see on TV. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, you would shoot at those from different distances with different weapons, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. All right. And... Uh, did you go with your father or grandfather to any shooting competitions? I went to my, with my father once or twice. And do you remember about how old you were 
when you went to those, what grade you were in? I must have been nine or ten. Huh? Nine or ten, I think. Okay. And did you ever shoot in any of those competitions? Yes, sir. How many competitions did you shoot in? I don't remember. About. Best estimate. Ten or so, I guess. Huh? Okay. And you won some prizes in some of those competitions, didn't you? Not that I remember. Didn't you win one of them? Not that I remember. Okay. Uh, you heard me ask about uh, your mother that your grandfather made the statement, uh, I think the same day or the next day of the shooting, that you were an expert marksman. Do you remember seeing that? No, sir, I don't remember seeing it or hearing it. Okay. Your grandfather did consider you an excellent shot, did he not? Yes, sir. And you were an excellent shot, weren't you? I don't know. Well, you knew you were able to hit the target you aimed at, weren't you? Yes, sir. And you were good at it, weren't you? Yes, sir. And you were good at it with both pistols and long guns, weren't you? Yes, sir. Uh, you were good at it with both open sights and telescopic sights, weren't you? Yes, sir. And you could hit uh, 10 cans from a considerable distance with your telescopic sight, couldn't you? Yes, sir. And you could hit 10 cans from a considerable distance with an open sight rifle, couldn't you? Yes, sir. What's the term? Have you ever heard the term draw a fine bead? Do you know what that term means? No, sir. Okay. Take dead aim. Do you know, you know what that term means? Where you take real good aim? Yes, sir. And you knew how to do that, didn't you? Yes, sir. Um, and with the pistol, uh, did you, when you shot pistols at target practice, did you hold the pistol with one hand or both hands usually? Or both ways? Golden is uncomfortable with the questions relating to weapons. Now that he is in the process of living his life after serving time, he wants nothing more than to distance himself from the past. While he shot various types of guns when he was young, it is doubtful that he paid much attention to each one. With the threat of perjury hanging over his head, it is easier to say he doesn't remember rather than be accused of lying. Uh, both, I guess. Okay. Um, did you ever shoot a shotgun? Yes, sir. And did you ever shoot at things thrown up in the air with a shotgun? I never shot skeet or anything like that. I never no. shot skeet, okay. Did you ever shoot at any birds that they were flying? I duck hunted, yes. Okay. And uh, did you ever kill any ducks while duck hunting? I may have killed one. I don't, okay. I don't remember. Uh, what about quail hunting? Did you ever go quail hunting? No, sir. When you went squirrel hunting, did you use a, a shotgun or a rifle? A shotgun. Okay. And were you able to kill squirrels? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, did you ever go hunting with a rifle? Yes, sir. What did you go hunting with a rifle? Squirrels, too. Okay. And open sight or telescope or both? Both. And were you able to kill the squirrels okay? Yes, sir. And uh, rabbit hunting, didn't you go rabbit hunting too? Yes, sir. And what'd you kill the rabbits with? Probably a shotgun. Uh, did you ever shoot them with a rat, with a uh, rifle? No, sir, not that I can remember. Just mainly a shotgun? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, you... The point of this line of questioning is to show that if Golden were easily able to shoot small targets that moved quickly and erratically, it would be quite easy for him to hit larger, unsuspecting targets. Shot a pistol uh, at fairly close range to targets and also at longer ranges? Yes, sir. And same thing with rifles, closer ranges and longer ranges? Yes, sir. What's the longest range you can remember approximately that you shot rifles for target practice? 50 yards, 100 yards? I remember we sighted them in at 25 yards, so that's... Okay. Tell me what you mean when you say you sighted them in. What, what do you do when you're sighting in a rifle? When you put a scope on it again, you usually sight it in for a short distance, and then it's usually on it longer. That is to make sure it's accurate, that the bullet hits where the crosshair is? Yes, sir. How do you, how do you sight it in? Tell me how you do that. You shoot a target and then adjust the crosshair. Okay, tell me how you adjust it. What do you do? There's Turn knobs or something? Yes, sir, there's knobs on the scope. 
Okay, and did you do that? No, sir, not at that time, no, sir. I, mm -hmm. mm -mm. You've done that before, though, haven't you? Help side them in? I've watched them do it. I, okay. Um, Did you have any brothers and sisters when you were in the sixth grade, brothers or sisters? Yes, sir. I have a brother and a sister. What's your brother's name? Uh, Wesley. And how much older uh, than you is Wesley? He's quite Somebody. a bit older. Huh? He's quite a bit older. Well, how many years older is he? Um, he's in his 30s, so. Okay. What about your sister? She's older, too. How old is she? She's in her mid-30s. So. Both your brother and your sister are in their 30s, and you're now? 22. 22. All right. Since your release, have you had a uh, an automobile? Yes, sir. What kind of automobile? Uh, my grandfather left me his truck. And what was it? What year make and model? It was a 97 Chevy truck. 1997 Chevy? Uh, yes, sir. What kind of Chevy? S10 or what? It was a full-size extended cab. I can't hear you. It was a full-size extended cab. What color? It was white. Did it have stick shift or automatic? It was an automatic. And uh, did you get rid of that vehicle sometime? Yes, sir. When? About? Um, probably the end of 2007. What'd you get? Uh, 2004. Chevy truck. What color? It's white. Stick shift, automatic? It's automatic. Extended cab, normal cab? It's a regular cab. Regular cab. Okay. Do you still have the motorcycle? Yes, sir. Do you still ride it? Yes, sir. And what year make and model is it? It's a 2007. Suzuki. What? Suzuki. Suzuki? Yes, sir. What model or type? Or it's a 600. 600. What does that mean? That's the engine size. Okay. Is it an off-road motorcycle or a street bike? A street bike. Any other vehicles? No, sir. Do you have your insurance card in your pocket? No, sir. Don't you normally supposed to carry a card that shows you got insurance with you? Yes, sir. It's in my vehicle. It's in your vehicle. Okay. Uh, is the uh, 2007 uh, Suzuki motorcycle in your name now? No, sir. Whose name's it in? My mother. Did she ever ride it? She bought it for my dad and me, so she knows to ride it. Okay. The 2004 Chevy truck, uh, whose name is it titled in? It may be in my name. I'm not sure. Who bought it for you? My mother. Okay. And the 1997 Chevy, after your grandfather died and his left to you, did you change the title over to your name? I don't remember. Okay. Uh, let's talk about jobs since your release from incarceration. Have you held a job of any kind since you were released? No, sir. I've volunteered to help out some people, but I've not held a job. Volunteered where? Um, one of my mother and father's friends. Um, I helped him out. He he was a carpenter, and uh, who is? It? Sir. What's his name? Clarence Henson. It is difficult for any convicted felon to get a job. For Golden, it is nearly impossible when people find out who he is. Young man, you're going to have to speak up. His name's Clarence Henson. Spell the last name. H-E-N-S-O-N. -S Where's Clarence Henson live? In Ravenden. <clears throat> Any other job? You were helping him do carpentry work? Yes, sir. Was he paying you? No, sir. How long did you work for him? It was off and on, mainly when he needed help with a bigger job. How, long, how many times did you help him? How many days total? One day a month? Five days a week? 
two or three days a month. It depends. Did you get anything out of it? He'd buy me lunch every now and again, and he was teaching me how to do some of the stuff. Okay. Um, any other jobs? Um, a friend of mine from school, he had some batting cages, and I would run those for him every now and again when he couldn't be there. Who's that? Danny Brewstrom. Spell the last name. I'm not sure the... Say it again loud and slow. Brewstrom. Brewstrom? Yes, sir. Spell it the best you can. B-R-U-S-T-R-U-M. Where does Danny Brewstrom live? In Batesville. Do you know where? Do you know his phone number? His phone number, uh, but I don't know his... What's his phone number? It's written on one of the sheets of paper. All right, let's pull it out. 612. 612-9893. 612-9893? Yes, sir. What are you looking at now? It's a list of the jobs and the attorneys that I was told to bring. Okay. Let me see it, please. You've got jobs, all volunteer clearance. Uh, Henson, Danny Burstrom, and then your attorneys, Joe Perry and Danny Glover, right? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll mark this as Exhibit 20. And that was brought in response to the notice of deposition Deuces Tecum, was it not? Yes, sir. All right, we'll go through that notice here in a few minutes. But uh, we'll do it right now. Exhibit 21, or 21 will be the notice. Did you bring everything you have that relates to that notice? Yes, sir. Let's look at item A. Uh, about social networking websites, Facebook, MySpace, or any others. Did you bring anything in relation to that? Yes, sir. Show me what you brought. This is a copy of the all the stuff off of Facebook. All right. And uh, what you've handed me, I'll mark as Exhibit 22, Facebook. Did you have other things on Facebook that you've erased since you were served with the subpoena? No, sir. Have you ever had anything, anything on your Facebook page that you've erased? Uh, not that I can remember. I'm, okay. I hardly ever use that one. Right. And, and what other what other internet uh, <laughs> places do you or have you used? I had a MySpace, and it was deleted. Why? It was before I was served with this. I tried to pull it back up to bring it to you, but I couldn't get it. Who deleted it? I did. Why? I didn't didn't have any use for it anymore. Why did you delete it in the first place? I was done using it. I didn't. Did you delete it because you got found out who you are and where you were when you got served with a subpoena? If Golden was trying to hide something by deleting his account, he didn't help himself. Often, that sort of information can be recovered. No, That's sir. why you deleted it? No, sir. Okay. I may have a little bit of information related to that. Let's talk about it in a minute. Have you ever had an email address? Yes, sir. What email addresses have you used? B H S U. S say it again. B H S U. Nineteen eighty six. At Hotmail. And yours? And Yahoo. It's the same, but just Yahoo. What does B H S U mean? Black Hill State University. You ever had any others? Not that I can think of. Well, school, school accounts, but I never use those either. Okay. All right. We've introduced pictures before in this deposition. If I can find them, here we go. 
Exhibit 13 to your mother's deposition. Do you recognize those pictures? Yes, sir. Who are you giving the finger to there? My sister. Why? She had said something, and... And you're going to tell us that's not your beer there in the picture? Yes, sir. That's not my beer. Where was your beer? I didn't have one that night. I was a designated driver. Okay. You do drink, though, don't you? I have, yes. And you still drink, don't you? No, sir. When'd you quit? Last week? No, sir. When'd you quit? I just, I don't know. It's been a while. When's the last time you had any alcohol to drink? It's been months. Okay. And uh, what bar is this and where is it? That's uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Where? In Cape Girardeau. What other bars have you hung out in Arkansas? I've been to uh, the Moose at Batesville. You What's remember there? No, sir. Did you have to sign in? Yes, sir. As a guest? Yes, sir. Who'd you go as a guest of? You just signed your name under the guest thing. It, they just let you in. Whose dog is that in Exhibit 13? Uh, my sister's. What kind of dog is it? Uh, it's a mix of some sort. Okay. <clears throat> well, where were those photographs posted? What website were they posted on? I think they were on my sister's MySpace. Um, what's marked as exhibit uh, 23 and it's got text under it it says the picture of you it says Drew's little girlfriend is cute but I think she's cheating on him with some handsome fellow named Martin or I don't know who the pictures are Did you recognize that? yes sir who is that? that's some of my sister's friends Golden may have been prohibited from drinking alcohol, even though it was not relevant to his crime. Whatever the case, the point has been made to Golden that he has been tracked quite closely, and if he lies, there may be evidence out there of which he is unaware. You have any tattoos? Yes, sir. What do you have a tattoo of? A cross. And what's on it? Uh, Romans 3.23. What does Romans 3.23 mean? For all have sinned. What? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Exhibit 24, is that a copy of your uh, tattoo you posted on the web page? Yes, sir. What web page did you put that on? I don't know. What site was used for that? MySpace? It may have been. Why did you post uh, your tattoo on it? I don't know. When did you get your tattoo? It's been a while. When did you get your tattoo? About a year ago, maybe. About a year ago? Yes, sir. Uh, where'd you get it? Uh, here in Jonesboro. We're down on Main Street? Yes, sir. some other things in a few minutes we'll get to them. Uh, did you ever engage in dialogue sessions with young ladies uh, on your Facebook or MySpace or any other computer page? Yes, sir. I talked to different people on there. Is that where you uh, referred to M. Bowden as a Bum city, so to speak. Yes, sir. And <clears throat> were you able to pull up any of those? No, sir. Why not? I couldn't get them. They... What computer were you using? It may have been my mother's. Well, it may have been mine, but whose was it? My mother's, I think. Okay. 
Did mom know you was using that kind of language on her computer? I don't think so. You have received no threats from anyone since a year after this shooting incident, have you? No, sir. You have never had a threat directly from any, of, even a family member of any of the victims of the shooting, have you? No, sir. Okay. Um, did you post in one of your uh, Gmails that you got stopped in Black Rock but were lucky uh, that uh, the girlfriend was driving? No, so that was not my girlfriend. Okay. Well, did you remark that you uh, got stopped in Black Rock and uh, is lucky that somebody else was driving? Yes, sir. Right. Um, why? Why were you lucky that somebody else was driving? Because I had been drinking. Hmm? Because I had been drinking. start posting on MySpace and so on, uh, how long after you'd gotten out of jail? Fairly soon? Five or six months, I think. I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. The lawyer already knows the answer to most of these questions. If he has been able to obtain the contents of Golden's emails, then he knows exactly which social media accounts have been used. When you were in Memphis, were you in a juvenile facility or a uh, halfway house? It was a juvenile facility. Did you, was it a lockup? Is that what it was? Yes, sir. Okay. How'd you spend your day there? We go to school, and then we go back to our rooms. Watch a lot of TV? No, sir, not really. Huh? Not really. The application for your gun license, you remember filling out an application for a gun license? Yes, sir. The application was not true, was it? It wasn't complete. Well, when it says list all addresses you had had, uh, you didn't do that, did you? No, sir. So when you put down as a listing of addresses, representing them as a complete list, that was not true, was it? Bill got that? It wasn't true, was it? No, sir. Do you know Mindy, whoever that is, the Nova Republic? No, sir. Okay. You listed on Exhibit 11 on June 28th, that, or do, June 21st of 2008, that, <coughs> excuse me, your address was 822 Salem Springs Road, uh, Evening Shade, Arkansas. That wasn't really true, was it? That's one of the places I stayed, That's yes, sir. one of the places, but that wasn't your residence, was it? And that was what was on my driver's license. And I was instructed to put what was on my driver's license. And who told you to do that? The firearms instructor. Who was the firearms instructor? I don't remember his name. And uh, did you tell him you had other addresses? No, sir. He just, he said that that was what they normally do is they put what's on the driver's well, license. Did you ask him, did you have to ask instructions on how to fill out your current physical address? Could you, could you not figure that out on your own? No, sir, I didn't ask. Okay. Now, when it says over here on the other page, uh, on this page, your application, concealed handgun license application, it says list all residences during the last two years, uh, and that was in, in 2008, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And you listed the Silver Springs 
road in evening shade, right? Yes, sir. And you listed Raven Den, right? Yes, sir. Uh, when it says to list them all, you represented that the complete list was Raven Den and evening shade, didn't you? Yes, sir. And that was false, wasn't it? I didn't think you had to put down. Answer my question. This was false, wasn't it? Yes, sir. When it says list all residences, you know what the word all means, don't you? Yes, sir. What does the word all mean? Everything. You didn't list everything, did you? No, sir. All right. When it says you were in uh, Raven Den from April 2002 to May 2006, that wasn't true, was it? That's always been our mailing address. Answer my question. When you said you resided at Raven Den from May from April 2002 to May 2006, that was not true, was it? No, sir. Because you didn't reside in Raven Den. You resided in North Dakota or, or Memphis or both during that time, didn't you? Yes, sir. And you didn't list either of those residences, did you? No, sir. And when it says uh, residence in evening shade from May of 06 to June of uh, 08, uh, you didn't reside there the whole time during that period of time, did you? No, sir. When did you first reside in Evening Shade? Upon my release. When was that? May 25th of 2007. Okay, so you listed that you were living there a year before you ever set foot on the place. Isn't that true? Yes, sir. So that was a false statement that you knew to be false when you made it, didn't you? That was just a mistake, sir. It was false, and you knew it was false. True? At the time, I was trying to hurry up and get done with it. Answer my question. When you wrote down that you were living in evening shade in May of 2006, you knew that was not true, didn't you? At the time, Golden was most likely lazy and rushed through the form, as many people do. For most people, these inaccuracies would go unremarked. But for Golden, it is easier to put a darker spin on his intentions. I wasn't paying attention to that. I wasn't. Are you trying to tell us under your oath that you thought for one minute that you actually lived in Evening Shade, Arkansas in May of 2006? No, Are you sir. trying to claim that that's true? No, sir. That's not what I'm trying to claim. It's not true, is it? No, sir. Never has been true, has it? No, sir. And you knew it wasn't true when you wrote it down, didn't you? No, sir. I wasn't paying attention to it. I was just... Uh -huh. and, uh, and when you report that you lived there from... June of 2006, uh, or May of 2006 to June of 2008, uh, you knew you lived other places, didn't you? Yes, sir. So when you said you lived there for that period of time, you knew that wasn't true, didn't you? Yes, sir. And uh, you didn't tell them that you lived in Cape Girardeau, did you? I didn't know you had to put out a statement. Answer my question. You didn't tell them you lived in Cape Girardeau, did you? No, sir. And it says list all residences, and you knew you lived in Cape Girardeau when you filled this out, didn't you? Yes, sir. And you didn't put Cape Girardeau down, did you? No, sir. And you knew you lived in Batesville, did you? I was staying between Batesville and Evening Shade and Raven. You knew you stayed in Batesville in a residence, didn't you? You had an apartment rented that you stayed in. You had furniture in. Yes, sir. And you didn't list that, did you? No, sir. All right, we're at break time. Thank you, counsel. The time is 2.35 p.m. We are off the record. The time is 2.42 p.m. We are back on the record, counsel. Right. Um, I want to jump back to your motorcycle wreck. Uh, you got a couple of tickets that, for that incident, didn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, remember what they were? Um, no motorcycle endorsement and failure to maintain, I think, was the other one. I'm not... Failure to maintain control? Yes, sir. Did you pay both those? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, when did you leave uh, Cape Girardeau? It was like uh, uh, August or September of 07? It was around August. I was enrolled at the community college, so it was, it was bef okay. around then. You applied for your license June 21st of 08, is that correct? You tell me, driver's license? No, the uh, concealed handgun permit. Yes, sir. And so a year before that, within the year before that, you were living in Cape Girardeau for a while, weren't you? Yes, sir. Uh, 
Well, here where it says, have you been a resident of the state of Arkansas continuously for a period of at least 12 months immediately prior to submitting this application? You checked yes, didn't you? Yes, sir. That's false, wasn't it? Yes, sir. And uh, you were notified and you signed a statement under oath that the applicant states under oath the representation page uh, through page 125 are true and correct, and you signed that as being true mm -hmm. under oath, didn't you? Yes, sir. That all these pages were true, and they weren't, were they? At the time, I thought they were. You didn't think you lived in Arkansas for a continuous period of 12 months because you knew you moved, to, you moved from Missouri in August or September of 2007. You know what a year is, don't you? Yes, sir. You knew that was false when you said you lived in Arkansas for 12 straight months, didn't you? I wasn't thinking at the time, sir. Answer my question. You knew you had to live in Arkansas for 12 straight months, didn't you? Yes, sir. And that statement you made was false, and you knew it was false, didn't you? True? Yes, sir. Okay. And you knew this application was seeking complete information, didn't you? Because they want to do background checks, right? Yes, sir. And to do a background check, you know they got to have complete information, right? Yes, sir. And you didn't want them to know about you being up in Missouri and changing your name from uh, Golden to Grant, did you? That wasn't my intention. You didn't want them to know your name had been Golden, did you? I didn't want... I didn't had no intention of defrauding that. Well, we'll let somebody else decide that. You did not give this state police any information that your name had been Andrew Golden, one of the West Side murderers, and you didn't give them any information that might help them find that out, did you? No, sir. And because if you'd given them the Cape Girada name and they'd have done a name check for Cape Girada, they could have probably found out that you'd changed your name from Andrew Golden uh, to Drew Grant. They could have found that out pretty easy, couldn't they? They might have been able to, yes. It's in the court records up there, isn't it? Yes, sir. Filed in records? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So you just left that out so they couldn't find that out, didn't you? Golden knew better than to apply for the carry and conceal permit. As a convicted felon, he would have been prohibited from carrying a firearm. That's true, isn't it? Remember now you're under oath. Yes, sir. That's true, isn't it? You yeah. didn't want them to find it out, did you? Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, uh, your uh, status as a juvenile offender under federal law, had you been told anything about any restrictions on your ability to have, or possess, or use a firearm? No, sir. When you were released from federal custody, did anybody mention to you about firearms? No, sir. And same thing with state custody? No, sir. Okay, for you to apply for the firearms, you had to certify that you'd gone through a course, hadn't you? Yes, sir. And in the, the course, you had to, to demonstrate proficiency with a firearm, didn't you? Yes, sir. You had to go to a range and shoot. Yes, sir. So you had a gun in your possession, didn't you? Yes, sir. And we're shooting it. Yes, sir. Whose gun was it? It was my father's. Where'd you get it? From him. When? For the, when that, for that uh, class. And how long had you had the gun to work on this class? Just for the day. One day. You went, would you go, tell me when and where you went to get the gun. I went to his house. Same day of the test? And earlier that morning, probably. I don't really remember. And did you go up and shoot that day and then take it back to him that night? I may have, yes, sir. No, I'm not asking what you may have done. I ask what you did do. I don't remember. Uh -huh. Did you have to demonstrate uh, proficiency with understanding the firearm and the fundamentals of the firearm? Yes, sir. Uh, and ammunition? Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, practice? You did that for an hour and a half? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Had you shot a gun at any other time from the time you were released until the time you applied for the uh, permit? Yes, sir. Where else had you shot guns? We had squirrel hunted some. And, uh, we being who? Me and my father. And how many times did you go on squirrel hunting? 
I don't remember it a few times. Once for sure. Uh, where'd you go squirrel hunting? Um, at Hardy, a place up there. One day or two or three days? Just once. One day. And, uh, did you do any target practice before you went hunting? Yes, sir, in the backyard. Yeah, because you hadn't shot a gun in a while. You needed to kind of make sure you were uh, back polished up. Yes, sir. And how many uh, uh, rounds did you shoot practicing up? I don't remember. What kind of gun were you using? Uh, 22. Okay. Uh, and did you go hunting for anything else besides squirrels since you've been released? Uh, yes, sir, deer hunting. It was all archery, though. Okay. When did you go archery deer hunting? Um, last fall, some, and then once or twice this fall. You ever gone uh, deer hunting with a rifle? Not since I've been Shotgun? Not since you've been released? No, sir. How about before you were released? No, sir, not that I remember. I don't really remember going deer hunting before. Okay. The bow and arrows that were confiscated from you at the scene, were those yours or your dad's? My dad's. Where did y'all get those from? Who? Where did you and... Mitchell Johnson get the bow and arrows that were confiscated from you. At that your was dad's a, house. Mm -hmm. It was in the gun room. What? In the gun room, yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Have you been to any other schools besides what's shown on the uh, GED transcripts uh, and the other transcript that we have? Just the GED and then the two colleges. Okay. In the Black Hill State, I didn't. Okay. That was all correspondence. All right. Are you enrolled in college now? Uh, I finished up the semester, and I I haven't signed up for other classes or anything. Okay. Uh, I take it you've not had a paying job of any kind since you got out of uh, custody? No, sir. Who pays your bills? My mother and father. Uh, school, everything? Yes, sir. Okay. You get allowance? Uh, just to get through the week, get gas money and for food. Uh, you own student loans or are they paying for your school? They're paying for school. Since you've been out and you've been back to Jonesburg 10 times or so, have you driven by Mitchell Wright's house? No, sir. Have you no. driven by the homes of any of the victims? No, sir. I... Driven by West Side and just checked the place out? Mm, not that I remember. Been by your grandfather's home? Yes, sir. Did you ever go out in the woods where this uh, shooting took place? No, sir, not that I remember. Okay. Did you ever go by the cemetery since you didn't want to stir anything up? But did you ever go to the cemeteries and pay your respects in private to the victims at, of your escapade? No, sir. Are you a member of any clubs of any kind up in the school? Fraternities, clubs? No, sir. What bars do you go to up in that area? I've uh, just been to the Moose once or twice. Okay. <clears throat> Tell me again why you needed a handgun permit. I was concerned about those threats, and I was by myself quite a bit. Those threats of 10 years ago? Yes, sir. That hadn't been renewed by anybody? Yes, sir. The threats may have been renewed if Golden was ever identified. His concern for his safety is not unreasonable, although he should not have attempted to obtain a weapon. Uh, you own a gun now? I purchased one firearm from my father. It was a gift. What gun is it? It was a small caliber single shot rifle. <coughs> well, was it a gift or did you purchase it? I purchased it for him t as a gift. Where'd you go buy it? At uh, the pawn shop on G Street. Pawn shop on G Street? Yes, sir. When did you buy it? I don't remember. It's been over a year ago. Were you going by the name of Drew Grant when you bought it? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you fill out the firearm paperwork? Yes, sir. And uh, have you, uh, did your dad let you uh, uh, keep
keep any of his guns? Other than just the for the class that day. Okay. Did your grandfather, when he died, uh, he left you his truck? Yes, sir. Did he leave you anything else? Just his truck and his computers. Okay. What about his guns? What happened to his guns? The my uncles and dad got them. Okay. Um, when you were in South Dakota, was Mitchell Johnson in South Dakota with you? No, sir. Was there anything when you were in South Dakota that Mitchell Johnson constituted any threat to you while you were there? No, sir. Was there anything that prevented you from uh, telling the authorities uh, uh, about this alleged uh, coercion or of being forced into committing this crime? No, sir, other than the appeals going on at the time. they What? Other than the appeals and things going on. When were the appeals going on? When were they ended? Upon my release, but I mean, I, I think there was still even one that was in process that they never heard back from. Or uh, Did your lawyers ever tell you that uh, uh, committing a crime under duress is a defense? No, sir. That, you know, you can say, I did not voluntarily commit that crime. I was forced to do it, and that that's a defense to a criminal case. Did anybody ever tell you that? No, sir. Uh, when you were in Alexander, uh, first of all, when you were in Craighead County, you never told your parents or anybody else that you were forced into this criminal action. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I, not that I remember. And... Uh, were you and Mitchell Johnson in the same cell pod? Yes, sir. And was he moved from the cell pod in Craighead County at any time away from you? No, sir. He was there did you, ever, did you ever ask to speak to your lawyer privately? No, sir. Did you ever speak to your lawyer in private while you were in Craighead County? I can't remember. Did you ever speak to your lawyer in Craighead County with you and your mom or your dad or any other adult there? I don't really remember if we did or not. I don't. When uh, was Mitchell Johnson, when you were transferred to Alexander, was Mitchell Johnson also transferred to Alexander? Yes, sir. Were you in the same pod or unit there? Yes, sir. Were you eventually separated? Yes, sir. Why? I'm not sure. I think he'd gotten in trouble. And he was put in a different unit? Yes, sir. Did you ever notify the officials at Alexander that you were afraid of Mitchell Johnson and wanted to be segregated from him? No, sir. You were aware that segregation was available if there was a legitimate fear of threat, weren't you? Yes, sir. They, they did. I'm sorry? Yes, they did have that option. Okay, and you never asked for that, did you? No, sir. And when Mitchell Johnson was segregated from you at that time, he certainly could pose no threat to you because he could not have any access to you, could he? Yes, sir. There was still school. And uh, while I was there, two kids killed themselves, and it was over eight hours before they were found. It was possible. Uh -huh. uh, did uh, You did tell your mom and dad or some other people about Mitchell Johnson uh, forcing you into this while you were at Alexander? Just my parents. Uh, if you could tell your parents, there was no reason you couldn't tell the authorities, were there? It is true that Golden could have alerted the authorities to his fears. However, this does not always work, and murders and severe attacks still occur within prison, sometimes with those in charge turning a blind eye. No, sir. Okay. Uh, when you went to North Dakota, or South Dakota, uh, Mitchell Johnson wasn't even at that facility, was he? No, sir, he wasn't. No reason you couldn't tell authorities about this claim that you were forced into this, was there? Other than the appeals, no, sir. Okay. Um, when you were in uh, custody in uh, South Dakota, did you get to make phone calls? Yes, sir. Did you call your mom? Yes, sir. Did you remember her phone number? Yes, sir. Do you remember it now? Yes, sir. What is it? 870-869-1607. You're going to have to speak up, young man. It's 870-869-1607. Okay. 
Do you have a cell phone number? Yes, sir. What's your cell phone number? 870-844-0036. And how long have you had that number? For a little over a year. Okay, does your dad have a cell phone? Yes, sir. What's his number? 870-844-0074. What about uh, your grandmother? Does she have a telephone? Yes, sir. What is that number? Um, 870-268-1760, I think. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, does your sister have a phone? Yes, sir. you remember her number? No, sir. Okay. Uh, how often would you call your mom from uh, South Dakota? Uh, for sure, once a month. I was given a call once a month. I can't hear you. I was given a call once a month. That's what you were allowed? Um, that was the free one. Uh, they had a click phone that you could call. Okay, so you got a free call once a month. Yes, sir. And then you could call collect whenever you wanted to, that they would accept it? Yes, sir. How often would you call or collect? <coughs> Maybe once a week, I think. Okay. You also could write her letters? Yes, sir. And you, in fact, wrote her letters and sent her cards? A few, yes. Okay. And did you get correspondence back from her? Uh, yes, sir. What did you do with it? Usually... I threw it away after I'd get done reading it, and just, I never really kept any of it. Okay. Uh, have you talked to Mitchell Johnson in any way, corresponded with him, communicated with him in any way from the time you were in South Dakota until today? No, sir. You've read his uh, and deposition, or, or did you see the videotape as well? No, sir. You just, just read it online? Just read. Yes, just read it. Uh, you saw in his deposition where Mitchell Johnson said you were the ringleader in blaming you for this shooting incident? Yes, sir. Is that true or not true? It's not true. Okay. Well, uh, when did the conversation about uh, doing something first begin about the West Side shooting? I don't remember. Was it two days before? Longer. Or the Monday before. It was longer than that. Huh? It was longer than that. Longer than that. How much longer? Two weeks? A couple weeks. Months. Tell me how it first came up. Mitchell uh, said that he was angry at some people and related to the gang stuff. He, Him and somebody else had been into it and... Uh, he said he was going to get some people back over the gang stuff. And where did you come into play in that? I think he knew that I had the guns, and that was... Tell me about the conversation. Tell me who said what to who. I can't really remember. It's been so Tell long ago. Tell me the general nature of it. How do you know you had guns? It was known that I hunted and fished and stuff like that. It's common knowledge that you were a good shooter? And had guns? Yes, sir, and I hunted, yes. In fact, you had your own gun, didn't you, when you were that age for hunting? Yes, sir, a twenty-two. You had a twenty-two. that was your own, didn't you? Yes, sir. Did you also have a pistol? Not that I remember. Okay. Uh, now, when Mitchell Johnson told you that something was going to happen, that he was angry with some people, what did he say was going to happen? He never did say. Not... Not in the beginning, anyway. He just what? well, he really, he really never said. I, he he just said that he was going to get some people back. He said he was angry about the gang stuff and that they were testing him. And Johnson had a fascination with gangs and hoped to one day join one. Although he wasn't a member, he claimed at school to have connections. All right, what uh, what did you say to him? I just kind of blew him off. He's he was always talking about gang stuff and this and that, and I never really paid much attention to it. Did you ever see any evidence of any gang activity at West Side School? Other than him, no. And did you ever see any indication from him that he engaged in any gang activity? He would flash gang signs and wear colors and just 
different stuff like that. He, what about uh, smoking pot? Did you ever smoke pot? No, sir. Did you ever hear about Mr. Johnson smoking pot? Yes, sir. What did you hear about that? He told me that he'd smoked pot with his dad. Okay. Uh, what about uh, violent films? Uh, did you and he ever watch violent films? I'm talking about not necessarily together, but you know, like the Rambo films where there's a lot of shoot 'em up stuff. Things like that. I watched action films as a kid, but we never did watch anything together. We didn't have anything to do with each other, really, outside of the school bus. Okay. So you watched uh, action films, uh, uh, may not be Rambo, but things like that, uh, uh, correct? Yes, sir. And you'd see people get shot and die and blood and guts everywhere. You saw that on the action films, didn't you? Yes, sir. Of course, that was before the West Side shooting. Yes, sir. Did you have any video games that you played that involved action games? Or mm, violent videos? Not that I remember. Okay. <clears throat> when uh, a couple of weeks before Mitchell said he was going to get uh, uh, even with some people, did you report that to anybody at school? No, sir. Why not? I didn't believe him. He's not... I just didn't take him serious. I didn't... All right. When uh, when was the next conversation about doing something come up? There was a couple in between there. I don't. Where did these conversations take place? On the bus. On the way to school or on the way back from school? Both. And uh, so after he said it more than once and persisted, did it start to dawn on you he may be serious about this? No, sir. I'd... Like I said, I didn't pay attention to him. I didn't. The day before the shooting, do you remember what day of the week the shooting was on? Yes, sir. It was on a Tuesday. And on Monday, there were some people warned not to go to school, weren't there? I think he, reading his deposition, I seen where he said that he did. I don't. Did you warn anybody not to go to school? No, sir. I didn't. Did you know he had warned anybody not to go to school? No, sir. At the time, I didn't. When uh, is the first time that you knew something was actually going to be done about the West Side shooting or any retaliatory action against anybody? When he showed up at my house. All right, tell me about that. When did he show up at your house that Tuesday morning? While I was waiting on the school bus. You waiting inside or outside? I was outside. I was waiting on the curb. Huh? I was waiting on the curb. For... Yeah. What did Johnson do? He approached me with with a knife. Well, did he come walking up or did he drive up? He walked up. He walked up. Where was his vehicle? He had had it down at the church. He had parked it at the church. How far was the church from your house? I'm not sure. It was... Block? Two blocks? A mile? A couple houses down. It wasn't... Okay. And so when he came walking up to you, show me how he was holding the knife when he came walking up to you. At first I didn't see it and he had it down by his side. What kind of knife was it? It was a pocket knife. And uh, tell me what happened then. He said, you're going to help me do this or I'm going to kill you and your family. And I said, no. When he said, help you do this, do you know what he's talking about? No, sir. What did he say? I told him no. I was like... Well, when he said, do this, did you ask him, what is this? No, sir. Or did you already know what this was? I didn't know. I just said, no, I'm... I'm not. So what happened then? He said, you're going to let me in your house. I want you to speak up where I can hear you. I I'm said, having trouble hearing you. He said, uh, you're going to let me in your house. And I said, no. And he said, yeah, you're going to, or I'm going to kill you and your family. With a pocket knife. Yes, sir. And you believed him? Yes, sir. You believed he could kill you and then kill your dad with a pocket knife? Yes, sir. And your dad was how big? Golden was 11 at the time, and while the thought of that a grown man could be killed by a child with a pocket knife is ridiculous, it isn't surprising that Golden was fearful. Johnson had a reputation for violence, so Golden knew he was likely to follow up with a threat, or at least attempt to do so. He's... I don't know. He... And Mitchell Johnson was 
13 years old at the time? Yes, sir. And he had a little old pocket knife? Yes, sir. And your dad was, what, six feet tall? I think so. Mm, weighed 180, 200 pounds? Strong guy, wasn't he? Good shape? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And you're going to tell us you really believed Mitchell Johnson, 13-year-old kid, was going to kill your daddy with a little pocket knife? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so when he told you he's going to kill your family with a pocket knife, what'd you do then? I let him in the house. I knew my mom had that gun sitting on the counter, and I thought that I could get to it and maybe stop him. But when I opened the door up, he pushed me, and I hit the, the dining room table there and fell. And he came in, and he looked around, and he seen that gun there. And I started for it, and he pushed me down. And he grabbed the gun. You said you saw it on the counter? You knew it had been there on the counter? Yes, sir. It was there on the, the bureau or, not, or the counter there. I couldn't hear you. It's yeah. on the counter? Yes, sir. And uh, so you'd seen the gun on the counter before you left school? Yes, sir. And uh, so then when he pushed you down, uh, that was in the kitchen, I take it? Yes, sir. How did you get to the... Uh, uh, Tell me about the layout of the house from the front door to the kitchen. When you walked into the garage door or the carport door there, you're in the kitchen area. All right. So when uh, he had you come to the door or open the door, was that at the garage door? Yes, sir. It was at the carport door. So you door. went from the outside to the inside with him shoving you inside. Is that right? Yes, sir. When he shoved you, did he shove you down? Yes, sir. When I hit the table, I fell. Okay. Uh, what part of your body hit the table? My chest. Okay. Did he hit you in the back? Yes, sir. He pushed me. Right. Okay. Uh, and then when you fell down uh, and you got up, who did what? I tried to run for that, and he pushed me down again. And what happened then? He grabbed the gun. Okay. Did he hit you in the back with anything? Not at that time, no. Did he ever hit you in the back with something? Yes, sir. When did he hit you in the back? when I tried to get into my dad's nightstand drawer. And what did he hit you in the back with? It was either his hand or the butt of the pistol. Okay. Hard? Yes, sir. Knock I hit the ground. Down? Yes, sir. Hard enough to knock you down? Yes, sir. Where in the back did he hit you? On the top of the shoulder. Which side? Left, right, middle? On the right. Okay. So. And uh, what kind of gun was it that you were going for? What, was your, what kind of gun was your mother's gun? My mother had a little small revolver. So the uh, gun that was on the counter, was that a revolver? Yes, sir. What, was it a silver revolver or a blue? It was steel? a black one. Huh? It was a little black one. Okay. Um, all right, once he got the gun in his hand, what did he say to you or what did you say to him? He pointed it at me. He said, you're going to do exactly what I tell you to do. And what did he tell you to do? He told me... That I was going to help him get guns. Told him he was going to help me what? Get guns. From where? From my family's house. And uh, tell me what happened from there. From there, he walked me outside. We walked down to his van. And he made me get into the van. And then we drove back to my house. And we parked it there beside the house. And got out. And he... When, when you're walking down the street and he's got this gun, is he holding it out? Where's, what's he doing with the gun? It's in his pocket, in his jacket. Uh -huh. You didn't take off running? No, sir. Mm -hmm. So you got in the van. Uh, what happened when you got in the van? And we went, drove back, or he drove back to... Was this a stick shift or an automatic? Uh, it was an automatic. Okay. The van was found 10 minutes away from the school where Johnson and Golden had stashed food, sleeping bags, and survival gear. So then you drove back to the house. Then what happened? From then, he had a sibling torch. And... Wait, no, wait, did he pull in the garage? No, sir, he pulled next to the, the garage there on the side of the house. Did he back in or pull straight in? He pulled straight in. Okay, and he had a settling torch in the back? Yes, sir. What did he do with it? When we went back in the house... We went into the gun room. He knew my father had a gun safe. Well, tell me about this acetylene torch. Did you did you all get it inside? It was just a small handheld torch. Okay. All right. And uh, oh, one of those little small little butane ones. Yes, sir. Okay. 
So uh, he knew your dad had a gun safe? Yes, sir. How do you know that? I talked about my father having a gun safe. So you told him about your dad having a gun safe? No, I told a lot of people about it. it was, okay. A lot of people talked about what their dads had as far as gun safes and stuff like that. It wasn't. So then what happened? He tried to break into the... Who's carrying the torch, you or him? He is. And uh, when he's carrying the torch, uh, where are you, in front of him or behind him? In front of him. Okay, then what happens? He's trying to get into the gun safe. He lights it and he sees that it's not going to cut it and he gets mad. So he's trying to get into the gun safe with the torch? Yes, sir. Uh, did he have a crowbar or a hammer or anything or just trying to burn through the weld or what? Just trying to burn through it with that. Okay. And then he hit the combination lock with a, a hammer and it came off. He did? Yes, sir. Where did he get the hammer? It was laying there in the house. It was on the uh, desk that my dad had. Okay. And what about the uh, revolver in the nightstand? Was there a revolver in, in the bedroom or in the gun room? In the, in the bedroom. All right. Was the bedroom and the gun room the same room? No, sir. There was, they were next to each other. All right. Did you go into the bedroom? Yes, sir. I tried to go to the bathroom. I said, I need to go to the bathroom. And I walked into the bedroom, and I walked into their bathroom, and he wouldn't leave, so he stood there. And when I was coming back out, I tried to reach into the drawer and pull it out. So you knew where another gun was? Yes, sir. That was loaded? Yes, sir. Okay. And it was, of course, it didn't have a trigger lock on it? No, sir. It was just accessible to you, and you knew right where it was? Yes, sir. And is a revolver? Yes, sir. Or a Derringer? It was, there was a revolver and a Derringer in there, both. Oh, the, both a revolver and a Derringer in there? Yes, sir. Which one did you reach for? The revolver. Okay. And what kind of revolver was it? It was just a medium-sized revolver. Blue steel? It was it was a silver one. steel? Silver. Huh? Silver. Silver. And uh, what happened then? That's when he hit me in the back, and I fell, and he grabbed those two. He grabbed both of those? Yes, sir. Okay. What happened then? We went back into the gun room. He said, you're going to start loading this stuff up. So he forced me to load all that stuff up. Load all what stuff up? The camping gear. and There was bullets and different stuff there. Golden always maintained that Johnson forced him, a claim that Johnson denied. There's no way to know for sure just how much of either statement is true. Was all this in the hunting room or the gun room? Yes, sir. Uh, were there knives in there? Yes, sir. How many knives did you load up? I don't remember. Did you do all the loading? Yes, sir. So you're carrying armload after armload of stuff from inside the gun room out to the van, right? Yes, sir. What's he doing all this time? following me the whole way with the gun. All right, then what happens? Once we get all the stuff loaded, or I loaded all the stuff there, forced me in the van. How'd he force you in the van? He opened the door up and shoved me in. Okay. Then what? And he came around and got in. And he drove from there to the gas station. Let me interrupt you. You know, when you tell them things that happen, if they happen that way, you're probably going to remember most things that happen, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, you forgot to tell us about the pantry being broken into that your mama said. Yes, sir. That's part of the story you left out, isn't it? He he got into the pantry and all that, yes, sir. Just left that out? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what? So you go to the gas station. What gas station? There's the one on the hill. What hill? The one going towards the school. Close to your mom's house? Yes, sir. Okay. What happened there? He tried to pump gas, and he couldn't pump gas. So they was were... he out of the vehicle trying to pump gas? Yes, Where sir. Where were you? Sitting right there, and he was watching me. Hmm? Sitting right there, and he was watching me. Where was the gas tank on that van? Driver's side or passenger side? I don't remember. It was, I think it was on the passenger yeah, side. They're on the driver's side. Driver's side. I think so. I don't So if I he's filling remember. up gas, and that, that van had solid wall on it. It didn't have glass sides, did it? It had glass. Oh, it did have glass? Yes, sir. Okay. And there were people there at that gas station, weren't there? I think so. I'm, well, sure. I don't remember. Uh, the gas station was open, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Had clerks in there? Yes? Yes, sir. 
And did you try to jump out and go run until the clerks call the cops or anything? No, sir. Why not? I was scared. Uh-huh. All right, then what happened? From there, he drove to the road next to my grandparents' house, and he parked in the little cul-de-sac. This road next to your grandparents' house, uh, how far was it from your grandparents' house? I'm not sure. Well, the length of this courtroom, uh, a mile? Half a mile, okay. I guess. I'm, Had I'm you not... ever been there with Mitchell Johnson before? No, sir. Was it on the bus route? No, sir. Was it I, near I, I remember. Bus route? He lived close to there. He lived close to there? Yes, sir. Okay. So what happened once he parked out uh, on a cul-de-sac near your grandfather's house? He forced me out of the van, and from there he w we walked through the woods to my grandparents' house. How do you know how to get to your grandparents' house through the woods? I don't know. And how far was it? I, I Half a mile through the woods, and he knew how to get there? Yes, sir. Uh, of course, you were very familiar with that area. You've been out there a lot, weren't you? No, sir, not all the way through there. So he knew how to get there. You'd never seen him out in those woods near your grandparents' house before, had you? No, sir. We didn't hmm? associate outside of the classes okay. or school. Golden reiterates that he and Johnson did not have contact with each other outside of school, or more accurately, on the school bus. This has never been disproven, although it is odd how two boys who barely knew each other were able to come up with such a plan in this manner. So how did he find his way to your grandfather's house? I'm not sure. He... Did you lead or did he lead? I was in front of him walking. Okay. Were you? Did he tell you where to go or did you know where to go? He told me where to go. He told you where to go. Okay. And so then uh, you follow. he follows you to the grandfather's house, but you weren't leading the way he was telling you where to go? Yes, sir. Okay. And then uh, when you get to the grandfather's house, what happens? He. We came up through the back way. There's where the fence and stuff was. And there was a crowbar laying there on a workbench that my grandpa had, and he smashed the back glass out of the black. There was the crowbar outside, the workbench outside? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, who smashed the back glass? Mitchell did. Uh, then what happened? Then he forced me inside. We went upstairs, and he seen the guns on the gun rack. Now, when you when you go in that basement, weren't there some guns hanging over the wall, over the door, leading from the basement going upstairs? I don't remember if there were or not. How do you know about the gun rack upstairs? I'm not sure. He, When we came in, we went upstairs. And Wait, I thought you came in the basement area. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. You came into the basement area. Yes, sir. How did Mitchell Johnson know that there was a big gun rack in the kitchen area of that house? I'm not sure if he did or he didn't. Hey, we went up the stairs. All right. And, and who I was, was going up the stairs first? Me. And he, I guess he told you to do that too. Yes, sir. Sure he did. And then uh, uh, what happened then? He seen the gun rack and the guns there, and they were locked. And there's a key on the side of the gun rack, uh -huh. and he seen that and unlocked it. I couldn't hear you. He seen that and unlocked it. He unlocked it. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. I wasn't tall enough to reach the. I'm sorry? I wasn't tall enough to reach that. That's So Mitchell Johnson followed you up to the gun rack, and then he saw the key that would unlock the padlock to the gun rack. And what happened then? He unlocked it. <sighs> what happened then? And he said, grab some guns. What guns did he grab? There was a few guns up there, and he grabbed the one with the scope on it, and that was the .30-06, and then the carbine, and another one, and then there was some, there was... You're going to have to speak up. Your voice is too low. There was the carbine and the that thirty six and the, I think there was a, another rifle too. You'd shot the carbine before in target practice, hadn't you? I don't remember if I had or not. Okay, you'd shot the 30-06 too before, hadn't you? No, sir, I don't remember if I, okay. I had or not. All right. 
Um, so how many guns did you get out of the gun rack? There was the three there on the gun rack. Okay. And what happened then? He told me to get bullets for them. And do you, you know where the bullets were? Yes, sir. Where were they? They were above the refrigerator. Above the refrigerator. So you've got a whole rack of guns there and the ammunition uh, on the refrigerator in the same room. Yes, sir. And the key to the lock was in the same, uh, uh, was right next to the, to the lock, wasn't it? Yes, sir. That's not much of a deterrent, was it? No, sir, not. Okay. Uh, anybody walking in there could have seen the could have seen the lock, right? Yes, sir. Now, before I go on, I want to show you my next numbered exhibit, which is going to be number 25. This is a photograph of you, I believe, when you were finally caught and served with the papers, and you took your picture when he served you with the papers? Yes, sir. And that's you, isn't it, number 25? Yes, sir. Well, you've grown your beard out even more since then, haven't you? Yes, sir. And let your hair get longer? Yes, sir. Trying to change your appearance again? No, sir. It's hunting and stuff, bow hunting. It's cold. Oh, okay. The lawyer is convinced that Golden did everything he could to avoid the summons. And with the reluctance and unease that Golden has shown so far, it is probable that he hoped the situation would go away if he waited. Uh, all right, so what happened next? After I got the bullets down for him, he made me load those other guns up. Load what other guns up? The 30 6 and... The carbine and one other one? Yes, sir. Okay, and then what? From there, he made me walk in front of him to the school. Well, now, you, wait a minute. Uh, what are you carrying when you're walking in front of him to the school? The rifles across my arms. How many? Those two, and he's got the 30 6 And... So you're carrying them like this? Yes, sir. Well, you could carry a rifle in each hand easy enough, couldn't you? Yes, sir. But you carried them across arm? Yes, sir. Like they were laying across a forklift or something? Yes, sir. You never carried guns like that. You were taught better than that, weren't you? Yes, sir. Weren't you always taught to carry a gun with the barrel pointing away from everybody? Yes, sir. That's what he told me to hold them. Oh, he told you even how to hold the guns to carry them? Yes, sir. Host, show me how you stuck your arms out. And like this. Did you have them in your hands? No, they were laying across my arms. And he told you that's how to carry them? Yes, sir. And you're walking through the woods carrying them that way? Yes, sir. Was there brush there, underbrush? Yes, sir. Walking through the underbrush with guns sticking out both ways? Right? Yes, sir. And I, I fell a couple of times too, sir. So then what? When we got to the school, he made me set everything down. And then he told me, he said, go inside and pull the fire alarm and then come back out. He said, if you don't, I'm gonna come in there and find you and kill you. And he watched me through the scope while I walked around and walked into the building and pulled All the right, fire alarm. All right, you let your voice drop again. He said, go in there and pull the fire alarm and what? And then come back out to where he is. And he said, if I didn't, he'd kill me. And, uh, of course, that building uh, is made out of concrete block, isn't it? Yes, sir. He said that he would come in there and find me and kill me. Uh -huh. Of course, I guess if you walked in that school, he wouldn't know where to hunt for you. That's a pretty big school. You could go to the principal's office, go hide in the closet. You could yell for teachers, call the police. You could do a lot of things, couldn't you? Yes, sir. You didn't do any of those, did you? No, sir. <laughs> and you knew he couldn't see you inside the building through his scope. Because that scope wasn't an x-ray scope, was it? No, sir. So you knew once you got inside the building, he couldn't see you. You knew that, didn't you? Yes, sir. So instead of going to the teacher for help or going to the principal's office or anything, you went ahead and pulled the fire alarm and went back out to the ambush site, right? Yes, sir. Totally innocent and totally forced to do it, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. All right, then what happened? Did you go pull the fire alarm? Yes, sir. Then what you did? I ran back out to where he was. <clears throat> and did you get out before the uh, anybody started coming to the to the fire alarm, uh, responding to the fire alarm? I think so. 
and uh, how far from uh, the back door uh, was it to where you uh, went to the ambush site? I'm not sure. It was... Well, look from here to that back wall. Was it further than that back wall? Yes, sir. How much further? I'm not sure. It... 25 yards or so. I... 25 yards? Yes, sir. I think so. You've, uh... you've seen guns sighted in at 25 yards, hadn't you? Yes, sir. Was it about 25 yards? I think so. I'm... Okay. And... Uh... When the kids came out of the school and the teachers came out of the school, your your vantage point uh, was uh, uh, where you had a clear view, did you not? Yes, sir. Were you and Mitchell Johnson right together when you did the shooting? No, sir. Where were you? I was in front of him and to the right. In front of him and to the right? Yes, sir. How many feet apart were you all? I don't know, 10 feet maybe, I, not well, maybe not even that. I'm not sure. Well, if the police report diagram shows where the, the two were, uh, one was near a wire fence. Now, was Mitchell near the wire fence? No, sir. Were you near the wire fence? I think so. Huh? I think so. I'm, I can't remember. Uh-huh. And... Uh, When From their vantage point, it was easy to pick targets as the students emerged from the school because of the fire alarm. Since students are taught to walk outside calmly in a single-file line, with Johnson and Golden shooting them at the same time, they were able to hit multiple targets before panic set in. You went back out to the wooded area. Who told, did Mitchell tell you where to get? Yes, sir. And what did he tell you to do? He said, kneel down and pick up a gun. And he said, if you don't, Start shooting after I shoot, then I'll shoot you. Start shooting at who? Did he tell you who to shoot at? No, sir. What did he tell you to shoot? What did he tell you to do? He just said start shooting after. Start shooting at what? Did he tell you to shoot at people? No, sir. And uh, did you understand you were to shoot at people? No, sir. Did you think you were supposed to shoot up in the air? Did that's... you think you were supposed to shoot squirrels? No, sir. That's... I shot at the gym wall and the dirt and in the air. You shot at the gym wall, dirt, and air? Yes, sir. I never... How in the world is it then that uh, uh, you shot Natalie's in the head? I didn't know that I did. You didn't know you did? No, sir. Expert marksman and you didn't know you shot a little girl in the head? No, sir. I didn't intentionally aim at anyone. I never... Well, you know where you point a gun and pull the trigger. That's where the bullet's going. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. And you're telling us it just accidentally, coincidentally hit her right in the head. I never aimed anything. You're telling us it's purely an accident that that bullet hit her right in the head. I never aimed anything. Mm -hmm. What about the others that you killed? Do you know how many you killed? No, sir. Do you know how many people were killed altogether? Yes, sir. How many? Five. Do you know how many Mitchell Johnson killed? No, sir. Do you know what the ballistics report shows how many were killed by the 30 out 6 or who was killed by the 30 out 6 No, sir. Do you know uh, how many were killed by the carbine? No, sir. Do you know where the people were located that were killed? No, sir. They were scattered out all over that uh, area, weren't they? I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. You're telling me you didn't take aim at anybody? Yes, sir. I never took aim at anyone. Just coincidentally managed to hit them right in the head. Not even taking aim. When you're shooting at a roof of a building and up in the air and it dirt. I never aimed at anyone, sir. Did you aim at the dirt? No, sir. I didn't aim at the I didn't aim at anyone. I was shooting at the gym wall. Did you did you hit the gym wall? The gym wall? I don't know. I Well, you know, you were a good enough shot that if you aimed at a gym wall, if a person was standing over where your mother is and the gym wall is by the door. From 25 yards, you could hit the wall instead of the, your mother, couldn't you? Yes, sir. So if you hit your mother, it's because you're aiming at her, right? Yes, sir. Right. And if you hit those people that day, it's because you were aiming at them, wasn't it? No, sir, I never aimed at any of them. Uh -huh. All right. You know the names of all the people who were injured? No, sir. You know how many were injured? Ten, I think. You know how badly any of them were injured that weren't killed? 
No, sir. Did you ever check? No, sir. From some of the people you knew in school, did you ever call them from the time you were in juvenile up until today to say, hey, how's everybody doing? The people that were shot, how are they doing? No, sir. Did you ever make any inquiry about how your victims were recovering from your, from your murderous rampage? No, sir. <coughs> did you ever make any inquiry of how the families were suffering from their grief and heartache? No, sir. Golden tries to claim that he didn't take aim, but given his story with shooting and the location of the wounds, this is far from believable. Over the years, he may have tried to convince himself that this was true. In that same line of thought, Golden probably avoids thinking about the victims and their families. I'm going to show you a diagram marked to another deposition as Exhibit E. Have you ever seen that before? This diagram? Mm -hmm. No, sir. Well, it's a diagram made by the police to show where people were who were killed and others who were injured and where the two shooters were. And that two shooters would be you and, and uh, Mitchell Johnson, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And they've got an index here. See this number here, 55? You yes. know who that is? No, oh, sir. That's the teacher, Shannon Wright. Did you see Shannon Wright outside that building that day? No, sir. Did you not see? Did you see people coming out of the uh, out at, in response to the fire alarm you pulled? Yes, sir. Did could you tell who any of them were? No, sir. From twenty five yards away, you couldn't tell Miss Wright from twenty five yards away. No, sir. From twenty five yards away, you couldn't recognize any of the kids in your class. No, sir. You expect us to believe that? I didn't. I wasn't looking at him. I didn't. Where were you looking? I was just looking out. Looking out where? Over the playground. I wasn't. People are responding to the fire alarm that you pulled 25 yards away, and you can't recognize your own sixth grade teacher and. Uh, Two of them, as well as kids that you knew personally, you couldn't recognize them from 25 yards away. I don't remember. All right. Well, let's see. 66. Do you see that? Stephanie Johnson. That's where she was shot and killed. You see that? Yes, sir. You remember seeing Stephanie? No, sir. 36. That's Brittany Varner. Right in the middle of the sidewalk. Do you remember seeing her? No, sir. All right. Then you've got uh, Natalie Brooks and Paige Herring right here. See them? Yes, sir. See where they've got marked as the gym wall? The gym wall. Or classroom, here. I mean? Yes, sir. All right. And here's the gym over here. Yes, sir. And you're telling us you're aiming at the gym wall. Yes, sir. And, a, and you're an expert marksman. And you couldn't tell whether you were hitting these people or some of them or that gym wall. And the gym wall went up like 30 feet in the air, didn't it? Yes, sir. And these kids were four feet tall or so, weren't they? Yes, sir. And if you wanted to hit the gym wall and not the kids, you're a better shot than to hit the kids, aren't you? Yes, sir. As he looks at the diagram of the positions of the victims, Golden's breathing becomes more labored from the strain. To a certain extent, he is reliving those moments. And whatever satisfaction he may have taken in his actions is long gone. What about the men on the roof? Did you ever shoot at the men on the roof? No, sir. Did Mitchell? I think he did. Tell me about the men on the roof. Where were they? They were on a building behind the construction work, I think. Um, I'm not real sure. All right, now I'm going to show you what's Exhibit D to another deposition, and we'll mark these as our copies of these, our next two exhibit numbers. Tell me what they are, Steve. 26. Oh, here they are, 26 and 27. So <clears throat> we'll mark Exhibit E as 26, and uh, D is uh, 27. <clears throat> Now, you see the uh, classroom, classroom, okay? 
Now, uh, see where it's got shooter locations? And there's two shooter locations. You see that? Yes, sir. And it shows them to be 22 feet, 10 inches apart. You see that? Yes, sir. You know how far 20 feet is? Pretty good way, isn't it? Uh, Not quite the width of this room, right? It may be. I'm... You know what a yardstick is? Yes, sir. It takes seven yardsticks to make 20, 21 feet, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So you got a pretty good idea of what 20 feet is. Yes, sir. And so when the commotion started and the shooting started, how many times did Mitchell Johnson shoot? Five that I remember. Okay. Who shot first? I did. I wanted to warn everybody to go back in. Oh, so you shot to warn people to go back in. Yes, sir. And you had your gun up uh, like you were aiming it? No, sir. What'd you do with it? I just, I had it and I shot. I didn't. Okay, did you see Mitchell Johnson looking through the scope? No, sir. Well, you could tell if he would have the rifle with the scope, you knew he'd be looking through the scope, didn't you? Yes, sir. All right, if he's looking through the scope to shoot people, why don't you just turn your gun and shoot him right between the eyes? You could have, couldn't you? I don't know. I'm when he scared. had his eye in that scope, he couldn't see you because he's looking through the scope, right? I guess. Isn't that true? You've shot through a scope. Yes, sir. And you know when you're looking through the scope, the only thing you can see is what's in that scope, right? Yes, sir. And that rifle scope was pointed to those kids and those teachers, right? Yes, sir. And all you'd have done to protect them and yourself would have turned your gun instead of looking through the scope right at Mitchell Johnson and dropped him. You could have done it, couldn't you? If Golden had been an innocent and frightened 11-year-old coerced into these acts as he claimed, that type of action would have been beyond him. Most adults would have a hard time making that decision outside of hindsight. I could have if I wouldn't have been scared. Uh -huh. How scared do you think these people were that were being slaughtered? Terrified. Who think was more scared, them or you? They are probably. Yeah, they were being ambushed by a couple of maniacs, weren't they? Yes, sir. Weren't they? Yes, sir. And you were one of those people doing the ambushing, weren't you? I didn't ever intentionally shoot anyone. That's a lie and you know it, isn't it? No, sir. I never aimed at anyone. Oh, it's pure coincidental that five people lay dead with bullets through their head and their, their hearts by pure accident, right? I never intended to. I never shot at anybody. I never you know what perjury anybody. is? Yes, sir. There'll be a time I'll be able to give this deposition to a prosecutor. Yes, sir. And when I do, I'm going to ask him to charge you with perjury because that's a lie. I, I'm going to object to that, Bobby. That's a lie. It's our very argumentative. Okay. All right. Now, these other people that were shot, they're scattered out all over the place, aren't they? Yes, sir. All at random? Or did you pick out any targets? I never aimed at anyone. Okay. We got three minutes left on our tape. Exhibit A to another deposition, that's your grandfather's gun room? Yes, sir. And the key was where? On that end. And the cable went through the locks? Yes, sir. That's, that's the guns, Exhibit B to another deposition, coming up from the basement, right? Yes, sir. And there were those guns. Did he tell you to get any of those? No, sir. All of them. Were those guns working guns? No, sir. None of them were. None of them were? Not that I... How would you know they worked or not? You could tell that the parts were missing off of them. Tell me what part's missing off which gun. That's just the stock and then the receiver. Right, tell me what parts are missing off these three guns right here. It's written on the... Huh? Right it's written on that piece of tape. He had those to fix. All right. What's What's missing on those? That one... Doesn't look like it has a bolt in it, and I don't. Okay. Now, let's look at a couple other pictures here, real quick. Exhibit one to another deposition is a lock hanging on a uh, nail with a key, and that's the. See the deer head at the end of photograph A, up in the upper right-hand corner right up here? This one? Yeah. Yes, sir. 
And you say that the lock and the key was right there, or the key was right there on the nail? Yes, sir. You see exhibit number two, you see the key? Yes, sir. That's where it was that day? Yes, sir. And then the key goes in the lock that was through the cables, right? Yes, sir. Okay, we're out of tape. Thank you, counsel. The time is 3.41 p.m. and we are off the record. The time is 3.49 p.m. We are back on the record, counsel. While we're on the break, any answers you've given, you need to go back and change or modify in any way? None that I can think of. Okay. Um, we were talking about access to the uh, guns. Uh, if the key had not been right there where you could get to it, you wouldn't have been able to get those guns, would you? No, sir. If you couldn't have gotten the guns, nobody would have been killed, would they? The lawyer engages in a bit of conjecture. The guns being properly locked away might have posed an obstacle, but if the boys were determined, it wouldn't have been impossible to find the key. I don't know, sir. Huh? I don't know. I don't, you don't think know? so. How would they have been killed if you didn't have the guns? He had the three from the house. And... What three guns did you have from your house? The Derringer and the two revolvers. Okay. And... Uh... What did you have on you, by the way, of guns when you were apprehended? I don't remember. There... Did you have a pistol on you? Yes, yeah, sir. There were some in the pockets of that huh? vest. There were some in the pockets of those vests. And uh, were they loaded? Yes, yeah, sir. I think they were. And so you also had access to a loaded pistol that you could have turned on Mitchell Johnson any time he turned his head or looked away, couldn't you? Yes, yeah, sir. You didn't do that either, did you? I was, I was scared. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were looking down there and you heard the shots ring out, and you shot the first shot, right? Yes, sir. Uh, did you see people start falling? No, sir. I didn't. Were you telling us you didn't see anybody fall down when they were shot? No, sir. I don't remember any of that. There was like a, a I don't know, I didn't, it was like I blanked out. I didn't see anything. I don't remember the psychologist I talked to said it blanked out my mind. I'm not worried about your psychologist. I'm asking you what you saw. I don't remember. In fact, as far as that goes, has any psychologist or, ever, or psychologist ever interpreted you as having significant psychiatric difficulties? No, sir. Not that I know of. I take it then, because a psychologist back you up, you wouldn't have any objection to me getting your psychological records, would you? No, sir. Because they back you up? Yes, sir. I, okay. I don't... All right. Uh, in fact, I've got an authorization, a medical authorization here. I'll ask you to sign so I can do just that. You'll just a routine medical authorization. We're going to object to that. Till On what basis? Until we have a chance to discuss that with him. Okay. You just told us you didn't mind us getting it. That's true, isn't it? He, he hadn't had a chance to discuss that with us. Well, I'm not asking about what your lawyer's about. I'm just asking about you. You told us you didn't mind us getting your psychological records at all, didn't you? Well, I'd like to confer with them first. Mm -hmm. So now you do have some concern about it? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, let the record show that the next number exhibits. Anybody know what the number would be? I believe it's 28. All right, we'll take a shot and just stab it at 28. If we got duplicates, we'll just... It will be 28. Tw call it 28. As a medical authorization, I'm going to ask you to sign so we can get your psychological records. That's all I'm interested in, no medical records. You weren't on any medication that day, were you? No, sir. Had you taken any medication in the year or two before this incident occurred? No, sir, not that I remember. Okay. Uh, what's previously marked as Exhibit 7, we've identified as Exhibit Number earlier. Can you identify the people in those photographs? Yes, sir. Which one's you? No, the one on the bottom and the one on the right. The bow and arrows in Exhibit 4 identifies another exhibit. Where'd those come from? From the gun room. Okay. Were those bow and arrows that you had shot before? I never shot that one, no. But you'd shot bow and arrows, hunting bow and arrows before, hadn't you? Yes, sir. Okay, so you know how to use them. Yes, sir. And uh, the machete and the knives that are shown in the other photographs, where did they come from? From the gun room as well. And the survival gear with ropes and camping gear and all that, where'd that come from? These items were found in the van. There were enough supplies to suggest that this was a carefully planned part of their escape, 
and not a last minute decision like Golden had tried to make it appear. From the gun room as well. And this blowtorch, is that what was used to try to get in the gun safe? Yes, sir, that was. Okay. Uh, do you know what the trigger lock is? Yes, sir. If these guns had had trigger locks on them, including the ones at your mother's house, none of this would have occurred, would it? Because you didn't know how to get into a trigger lock, did you? No, sir, I never, I don't know how to get into a trigger lock. So if, if your mother and your dad's guns at their home, and when they left the house, if they'd put trigger locks on them, all they would have been is billy clubs, right? Yes, sir. Couldn't have, you couldn't have fired them, and he couldn't have either, could they? No, sir. And if your grandfather's guns had been secured without the... Uh, uh, lock being right next to them, none of this would have occurred, would it? No, sir. Uh, did you ever see anybody fall down after they'd been shot or collapse? Not that I remember. Did you ever look out there and see people laying on the ground? No, sir, not that I remember. Did you hear screaming and crying? No, sir. I didn't... I don't remember. Did, uh... You say Johnson shot five times? Yes, sir. And uh, how many times did you shoot? I don't remember. Well, if there were ten people injured and five people killed, that's about 15 bullets, isn't it? Yes, sir. If Johnson shot five, who would have shot the other ten? It would have had to have been me. How many bullets did that uh, carbine hold? I'm not sure. In the... Did you reload? No, sir. You had an extra clip, didn't you? After he shot his five, I jumped up and ran. Well, how many times did you shot by the time he shot five? I don't know. You remember shooting more than once, don't you? Yes, sir. How many times do you remember shooting? Just that the first one, for sure. I don't remember. You remember only shooting one time and can't remember the rest of them? Yes, sir. Uh, you were taught when you aim a gun and pull the trigger, the bullet's going to go where you're aiming, isn't it? Yes, sir. And if someone is shot in the head with a bullet, that's because somebody aimed at that head, right? Yes, sir. And you knew that if you shot someone with a carbine from 25 yards, it might kill them? Yes, sir, if they were hit, yes, sir. And you knew that a gun could kill? Yes, sir. You'd been trained that by your parents? Yes, sir. And you'd known that from watching animals get killed? Right? Yes, sir. And you knew death was final. You knew that, didn't you? Yes, sir. And you'd been trained about the basics of firearm safety, that you've got to be careful where you point a gun because you might actually shoot and kill somebody. Yes, sir. So you cannot claim by any pretense that if you knowingly shot somebody, lo and behold, they might just be dead and that'd be a total shock to you. That'd be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did you look up and see Mitchell Johnson doing any shooting? No, sir. I just, you, I just remember him firing the fifth round, and then I jumped up and ran. Well, to remember that he fired the fifth round, you'd have to know that he fired one through four, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. They were, it was loud. Mm -hmm. It was loud. Yeah. So you could hear the boom, 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 right? Yes, sir. And you could also hear, because your gun was right by your ear, you could surely hear your gun going off too, couldn't you? I don't remember it. You could remember his from 22 feet away, but you couldn't remember yours right by your ear? Yes, sir. That's as true as everything else you've told us. Yes, sir. Uh, had y'all talked about, uh, or had Mitchell Johnson talked about doing something at the school as early as October? I don't remember. In kindergarten, did you shoot a kid in the eye with a pop gun? I don't remember that, no, sir. Uh, did you uh, kill somebody's dog with a gun? No, sir. Did you threaten to kill somebody's pet with a gun? No, sir. Did you ever threaten to shoot uh, any animal not in the area of hunting, like a domesticated animal? No, sir. Golden's statement is full of holes and discrepancies. He is leaning hard into the memory loss, which may or may not be true. The results found by his psychiatrist may help to determine if he may have blocked things out, but it isn't infallible. Why did you fire the first shot? 
I wanted everybody to go back in. It was a warning. If you wanted everybody to go back in, why did you throw the fire alarm for them to come out? It, it just got into the... I was scared, and I didn't, I didn't... Well, Mitchell Johnson hadn't shot until you did, did he? No, sir. So until you fired the first shot, there was no shooting to be afraid of because nobody had fired yet, right? No, sir. So you're the one that started the shooting rampage? Yes, sir. Um, was there any reason one person was picked out to die as opposed to somebody else? No, sir. Had any of those kids done anything to you? No, sir. Tell me about the escape plan. What was the escape plan? I don't know. Well, after the shooting, after you stopped shooting, what did you do then? I took off running. Running where? Towards the van. I was trying to get away from him. Well, if you were going to get away from him, you were going to run right to his van where he was going to go? I was thinking that if I could get there or if I could get to my grandparents' house, I'd be okay. Well, if you want to get to the van, it was his van, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. So you're going to run right to where he was going to go, and that's a way of getting away from him? No, sir. And uh, when you took off running, uh, what did he do? He jumped up and followed after me. Where were the guns? I don't remember. I yeah. remember I had the, the carbine and I kept slipping and falling. It was muddy out there and I kept falling and jamming it down in the, the mud. So you had the carbine with you. What happened to the other rifle you carried out there? I don't remember. What about the pistols in your pocket? Did you still have them? That was that was in a vest that he had. Okay. You had a pistol, didn't you? You told us earlier you had a pistol. They were in the, the vest. Well, the vest that you had. Did you have a pistol? At, when we got apprehended, I did, but when I was out in the field there, I sat down and gave up, and he stuck a pistol to my head. He and what? He, he stuck a pistol to my head, and he said, get up and keep running with me, and I did, and that's he handed me the vest and stuff. Wait a minute. He handed you the vest that had pistols in it? Yes, sir. Did you stop and put it on? Yes, sir. And it had pistols in the pocket? Yes, sir. And what did he do with his pistol? He had it pointed at me. So what did you do with the pistols in the pocket of your vest? Nothing. Where'd you go? I was started walking, and I kept tripping and falling and got tangled up in the barbed wire fence. And then what happened? And we got up on the road there, and the police got us. Hmm? The police apprehended us right there. Okay. And what weapons did you have on you when you were apprehended? I don't remember. And tell me about the men on the roof. When did you first see them? I don't remember really seeing them. Do you remember uh, shooting at them yourself or uh, Johnson shooting at them? I think he shot at them. I'm not sure. I remember seeing it maybe from his deposition that he did. I don't, I don't really remember it from mm -hmm. then. You saw in his deposition where he blamed you for all this? Yes, sir. And he said nothing about beating you up? Yes, sir. Did you ask the police to give you any medical attention when you were arrested? No, sir. I was... did, did you show them any bruises on your back or your head or your chest where you hit these places? No, sir. There weren't any, were there? Yes, there were. Oh, there were? There were scratches and all kinds of stuff. But were there any bruises on you? I think there were. I, I don't know. That one would have been on my shoulders. I wouldn't have been able to see it. Uh... Both Golden and Johnson have always been firm in their claims that the other was the instigator. Since there was no paper or text trail to follow, it is difficult to determine if one was leading the other or making any kind of threats. Was there any ammo gathered from any place other than the refrigerator? Not that I remember. Why did y'all stop shooting? Because I ran. Huh? Because I ran. Why did you start running? Because I knew that his gun was empty, and I just... How'd you know his gun was empty? Because he fired those five shots. What about the pistol in his pocket? Did you know it was empty, too? I thought he was reloading, so I just ran. Well, he had three... He had at least three loaded pistols with him, didn't he? I'm not sure. I think so, yeah. Well, the Derringer and the two revolvers from the house? Yes, sir. And so you were willing to run after you'd shot at all these people, 
but you weren't willing to run before you shot at the people. I was scared. You weren't you weren't scared after you shot all those people, but you were scared. I was scared then too. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so was Mitchell Johnson reloading? Is the reason you took off running? Yes, sir. Did you see him reloading? I seen him moving beside me. I just remember the fifth round going off, and I jumped up and ran. How much time passed between his first shot and his fifth shot? I don't remember. Can you give me an estimate? I'm not sure. Had y'all made any plans about where you were going to go after the shooting? No, sir. I didn't. So you gathered up food and camping gear, but there was no discussion about where you might go hide out? No, sir. Um, now, do I understand you to claim that you feel remorse and regret? Yes, sir. And that you are uh, terribly regretful of what happened? Yes, sir. And I understand from your mother that you'd never want to profit from this uh, incident. Is that correct? No, sir. I'd... I'm sorry? I'd never want to profit from it from that. You'd never want to sell a story or get money paid for your side of the story or anything like that? No, sir. That'd be wrong, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I brought an assignment just for protection of these families. I'll let your lawyers look at it. Basically, what it says is you would be assigning to uh, all of the parties to this lawsuit any rights or payments or interest you might have, past, present, and future, in any literary or publication uh, warrants. You wouldn't have any objection to signing that, would you? If they look at it. <laughs> Golden is going to agree not to profit from his crime, which means he will not be able to receive money for such things as book or movie deals, appearances, autographs or merchandise referring to the crime. Did they intend to dismiss the suit today? No. I do not. While they're looking at that, who is Amber Vanover? I don't know. Okay. Jonathan Woodard, do you know who that is? I don't. The name doesn't sound familiar. I don't know. Really. Who's Coach Shipman? I don't really remember. Do you know Miss Barnes at the school? The name doesn't sound familiar. I don't You ever heard the name Treetop Pyru? Yes, sir. What's that? Some kind of gang that Mitchell's affiliated with. He claimed to be affiliated with? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Did you ever see him hanging out with any other alleged gang members? No, sir. Uh, just a minute. Ask you about these phone records, uh, and we'll get to the phone records. Uh, uh, did you ever call anybody uh, in, as reflected? Have you looked over these phone records? No, sir, not really. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's go back to the list then. <clears throat> We've asked about uh, A. Um, a list of all schools attended the courses taken? Yes, sir. You got that? I have a... Let me see. All right, we'll make that as uh, 29. Uh, then, list of all jobs where there aren't any, right? 
Except the one you told us about? Just the two that list? I volunteered okay. for, yes, sir. Uh, list of all persons you lived, you've given us that? Yes, sir. You got that written down? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll make that as uh, 30. Now tell me when uh, the paperwork was filled out to change your name, who helped you fill out that paperwork? There, it was on the internet. It was a legal Zoom or something. Okay. And did you pay a filing fee at the courthouse? I can't remember. Where was this done? In Cape Girardeau? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Then, uh, I think we've gotten all the attorneys and court proceedings. There hadn't been anything but the state and the federal. Court proceedings, is that right? Just the state and federal, yes, sir. All right. And have you ever heard the name Daniel Scott Carra, K A R R A? No, sir. Okay. Have you ever gone by any other name? I think I asked you that and you have not, have you? Just Andrew Golden and Drew Grant. Okay. Uh, have you applied for a hunting license from the time you got uh, out of federal custody? I have an Arkansas one. And uh, is it a uh, gun permit or gun license? Just a hunting license and fishing license. A hunting license allows you to shoot guns? Yes, sir. And for archery. Okay. Um, you applied for a hunting license in any state besides Arkansas? Just Arkansas. Um, you've made uh, you, where you've turned your Missouri driver's license in. You don't have a copy of it? No, sir. All right. Any video statements or recorded statements you've given to any media or publication or institution or anything like that except your psychologist? Golden never sought to profit from his story and, in fact, seemed to do everything he could to ensure that no one would discover his connection. Right? Just, yes, sir. And no, uh, no literary contracts or contacts have been made, right? No, sir. And any correspondence from Mitchell Johnson from the date of the event up to now? No, sir. Okay, we've got the telephone bill. We'll go through those as we need to. I only have two minutes with my clients. If there's anything else we need to cover, we're not finished. The meantime, time is 4.09 p.m. and we are off the record. The time is 4.12 p.m. We are back on the record, Council. Cleanup question I forgot to ask you. What are you majoring in in college? What are you planning on doing in the future? Um, business right now, that's my major, but... I, I don't know. And the pawn shop you bought the, the gun at was on G Street. What's the name of it? Um, I can't remember. Where on G Street is it? I can't remember. Can you tell me about where it is? It's just, uh, just know it's on G Street. Okay. Um, you've told us that you don't remember any of the details of the shooting other than what you told us, right? Yes, sir. And you want these two survivors to believe that, and you want the parents of the other children who were killed to believe that, right? Yes, sir. And uh, if I pay for it out of my pocket, would you take a polygraph to discuss the issue, a private polygraph. We're going to object to that. I understand the objection, but I'm just asking if you do it. Well, we object to that question. Huh? That tells me all I need to know. Thank you very much. And have you understood all of my questions? Yes, sir. Any answers you've given, you need to go back and change now to modify, correct, supplement, add anything to, take anything away from, any answer you've given, I'm giving you a chance to change it. Otherwise, this deposition is going to stand as your sworn testimony. Anything at all you want to change? Nothing I can think of. Have I given you a fair opportunity to answer every question I ask you? Yes, sir. No more questions? We'll, uh, we'll conclude the deposition. Is there anything further? No questions. No, sir. Thank you. The time is 4.14 p.m. and this will end the deposition. Andrew Golden remained in the Missouri area. On July 27, 2019, another car departed its lane 
and crashed head-on into a vehicle being driven by Golden, killing him instantly. His wife and young son were both injured and transported to hospitals where they made full recoveries from their injuries. And that's the end of today's video. If you liked what you watched and want to support the channel, hit the like button and check out my Patreon link in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.